Rockets and rocket-propelled guided missiles are the staple component of any modern military arsenal. By definition, rockets are unguided and follow the laws of physics and trajectory. Missiles are guided either remotely or internally, or on a pre-programmed or terrain-following path such as the cruise missile. In fact, there is a missile for every occasion and every military platform. One man carried and operated anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles, artillery and tank-fired anti-vehicle missiles, and fixed emplacement missiles. Helicopters and fighter aircraft can carry anti-tank, anti-ship, anti-aircraft, and even anti-satellite missile systems. Then there are ballistic missiles of varying range and caliber, frogs and scuds that follow a simple ballistic course from launch to target. Then there are the long-range intercontinental ballistic missiles. Nuclear-tipped with multiple warheads, these are the most feared of all weapon systems and the subject of another episode. Ship and submarine-launched missiles are for defense against other ships, submarines and aircraft. They can also launch the cruise missile, rocket launch then powered by turbojets. They can cruise many thousands of kilometers to their target either on land or at sea. Probably the most extreme of missile systems is the anti-missile missile. Capable of high velocities and quick reaction times, these missiles have the accuracy to intercept and destroy an incoming missile. The venerable gunpowder rocket has a long and distinguished heritage. Early Chinese documents record the use of fire arrows in warfare. By the year 1045 AD, the use of gunpowder and rockets formed an integral part of Chinese military tactics. It would seem that armies on the receiving end of these rocket attacks learned quickly, adopting this weapon into their own arsenals. The Mongols brought the rocket to Europe around 1241 AD. Rocket attacks preceded the fall of Baghdad. The army of King Louis IX was fired upon with rockets during the Seventh Crusade. During the Hundred Years' War, the French army used rockets at the Siege of Orléans against the English, and so on. In later centuries, inventors began to improve these rockets. One of the early successful improvements was by William Congreve, an established inventor who went on to manage the Royal Laboratory at Woolwich. The Congreve rocket was made up of an iron case of black powder for propulsion and either an explosive or incendiary head and a wooden guide pole for stability. The original rocket design had the guide pole side mounted on the warhead. Later, in 1815, it was improved with a base plate and threaded hole. They could be fired up to three kilometers, although fairly inaccurately. They had a tendency to detonate prematurely. They were more adept as a psychological weapon than a physical one. They were first used against the French fleet at Boulogne-sur-Mer in 1806, fired from specially converted boats, and at the attack on Copenhagen in 1807. Congreve himself commanded one such ship and was awarded the honorary rank of Lieutenant Colonel. They were used throughout the Napoleonic Wars, although a specialist rocket troop was not formed until 1812, first seeing action at the Battle of Leipzig. But it was at the siege of Fort McHenry on September 13 and 14, 1814, that the rocket gained notoriety. A British armada of 19 ships attacked the harbor of Baltimore, among them the Erebus, formerly a 20-gun sloop. She had been converted to a rocket battery vessel equipped with 20 414.5 kilogram rocket batteries. They were fired from below the main deck through small scuttles or portholes. After assaulting the fort for over 25 hours, the Congreve rockets loaded with an incendiary charge did little damage, although four deaths were reported. 
It was these Congreve rockets, witnessed by a young lawyer named Francis Scott Key, that so impressed him to add the words rocket's red glare in his poem, The Star-Spangled Banner. William Hale, 1797 to 1870, another English inventor, saw the failings of the Congreve rocket and set about improving the stability of the rocket in flight to increase its accuracy. Like a bullet from a rifled barrel, he spun the rocket by using its exhaust gases. After various designs, he settled on three angled vanes protruding into the exhaust, deflecting a portion of the escaping gases and forcing it to spin, thereby stabilizing its trajectory. His patent was awarded in 1844, and the Hale Gunpowder War Rocket, also called the Stickless Rocket, was put into service. The Americans adopted the technology, and in 1847, during the Mexican-American War, a rocket battery was used against Mexican forces at the siege of Veracruz and in the capture of the fortress of Chapultepec, leading to the surrender of Mexico City. With the rise of modern warfare came new inventions and technology no less impressive than the aeroplane. With the introduction of these vehicles into the battlefield, it was not long before they were armed with machine guns, bombs, and eventually, rockets. Air-to-air -air rockets were first used in the First World War. Specifically, they were unguided incendiary rockets, their target, observation balloons and zeppelins. Developed by French inventor Lieutenant Yves Le Prieur, they were attached to the interwing struts of aircraft such as the Newport 11 and the Sopwith Camel. Electrically fired in sequence, they had a limited range of 115 meters. They were effective against observation balloons but were never able to down an airship. The rocket was phased out by 1918 and replaced with tracer and incendiary bullets. Development of the RS-82 and RS-132 rockets began as early as 1929. Rail launched, the smaller RS-82 was fitted to many aircraft wings during the Second World War. Unguided, their success rate was very low, but the Russians did shoot down two Japanese fighters in August 20th, 1939. These rockets were also fitted to bombers for self-defense and in the air-to-ground role as well. Their derivatives, the M8 and M13 rockets, were utilized in the Katyusha rocket artillery. The German Luftwaffe employed the Nebelwerfer 42 ground-based rocket for air-to-air -air deployment aboard Messerschmitt Bf 109 and 110 and Focke-Wulf FW190 fighters. They would engage the massed groups of US bombers in formation. However, these unguided rockets required the aircraft to launch them at 15 degrees above level flight, and aiming was difficult. Later, the Luftwaffe developed the R-4M rocket, which was the first practical anti-aircraft rocket. Principally, the missile was a 55 mm tube with a 520 gram warhead of high explosives. 812 mm long, with flip-out fins on the tail for stability, it had a range of 1,000 meters. Although unguided, the large warhead proved deadly if any contact was made with the target. America's new and deadly versions of the rocket firing plane are about to give a Sherman tank the works at the Dover, Delaware Army Airfield. A P-38, armed with the five-inch projectiles, dives for the target. A P-47 makes the run, armed with the same 130-pound missiles aimed by the plane's glide. These attacks are made at 300 miles per hour, the rockets hitting with terrific force. Aircraft attacking ground targets began with machine guns, then bombs. Soon rockets were in use. The plane swerved sharply. The RS-82 rocket was unguided, fired from rails under the wing, and first used in Operation Barbarossa against the Germans.
the British developed the RP-3 rocket, a 55-inch long, 3-inch diameter steel tube, hence its name of the 3-incher, filled with 11 pounds or 5 kilograms of cordite as the propellant, which was fired electrically. The warhead was attached to the end of the rocket and at first was a solid 3.44-inch armor-piercing shell. This type of warhead was found to be ineffective against the new German Tiger tanks, and a larger 60-pound or 27-kilogram high-explosive head was used, powerful enough to blow the turret off a tank. The rocket had a range of one mile or 1,600 meters, and a maximum speed of 480 meters per second. Four small tail fins supplied stability to the rocket, which, unguided, required the skill of the pilot to hit a target effectively. The rockets were fitted to rails under the aircraft's wings and an electric cable attached to the propellant charge. The Americans had the Air Force's 3.5-inch double FAR or folding fin aircraft rocket and the Navy had the 5-inch double FASR and HVAR. For shore bombardment, these proved very effective prior to amphibious assault. Special LCTs were fitted out with 1,000 launchers and 5,000 rockets. They were simply anchored offshore and pointed towards the beach. They are said to have had the equivalent firepower to 200 destroyers. The air-to-ground rocket developed quickly and fell into several specific categories of use. Unguided pod-mounted rockets and guided missiles, including anti-tank, anti-ship and anti-radiation or radar weapons. Modern examples are the US Hellfire missile and the Russian equivalent. With few exceptions, the makeup of the modern missile was settled. It was tubular, with a solid fuel rocket housed at one end. Stabilizing fins were of various size and shape, some rigid were placed at the rear and often midsection, connected to a command and control unit in the midsection, and connected to the sensor or guidance pack, usually at the other end. The warhead would reside between these sections. The AIM-4 Falcon, developed by Hughes Aircraft, began in 1946 as a subsonic, then later supersonic, guided missile, using passive radar and infrared in the second model. Capable of Mach 3 and a range of 9.7 kilometers, and originally designed for bomber defense, this was switched to interceptor fighters. This missile flew on the F-89 Scorpion, F-101B Voodoo, F-102 Delta Dagger, and several European planes, including the Mirage 3. In honor of the day, some of the newest jets put on a show. At Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, the dramatic destruction of a B-17 bomber, a Scorpion attack plane launches its rockets. The AIM-9 Sidewinder was the first successful short-range anti-aircraft guided missile. A heat seeker, the guidance system was based on the electrical conductivity changes in lead sulfide when exposed to thermal radiation. Two thin mirrors, one on either axis, would reflect the infrared light into a telescopic tube within the guidance system. The first successful launch of a Sidewinder was in 1953. Then called the XAAMN-7 and later redubbed the AIM-9A, the production version, the AIM-9B, came off the production line in 1956. Over 110,000 have been manufactured over the years with a steady range of improvements. Its first use in combat was September 24, 1958, by a Taiwanese Air Force F-86 Sabre, secretly fitted out by the US Air Forces to test the Sidewinder in combat conditions. Unfortunately for US developers of the Sidewinder, one missile hit its target and failed to detonate. It lodged in the airframe of a MiG-17, the pilot was able to land the aircraft safely, the rocket was retrieved, stripped down and reverse engineered. Soon after appeared the Soviet air-to-air -air missile. Codenamed AA-2, Atoll was a direct copy of the Sidewinder, even down to the part numbers. 
Soviet air-to-air -air missiles, like all other Soviet armaments, were closely watched by the US and NATO forces and given their own designation. The NATO assigned AA-1 Alkali, known to the Soviets as the K-5 Kaliningrad missile, was a beam-riding, semi-active homing radar type, but suffered the same issues as the early Sparrow guidance system. The AA-5 Ash was produced in both infrared and radar versions and was discernible by its very large fins. It was standard armament on many Soviet aircraft for 20 years. By far the largest air-to-air -air missile fielded was the AA-6 Acrid in both IR and radar variants. The AA-7 Apex, designed for all-weather interceptors, had a unique three-fin design giving it unprecedented maneuverability. AA-8 Aphid is a smaller, close-in firing missile. The AA-11 Archer or Vimpel R-73 is the latest in Russian short-range missiles. It is IR homing with a cryogenically cooled seeker able to see objects up to 60 degrees off its main axis. It has a range of 30 kilometers and can be aimed by a helmet sight, i.e. the pilot just looks at the target before firing for a lock-on. The radar-guided medium-range R-77 is a fire-and-forget missile comparable to the US AMRAAM missile and is so dubbed the Amramsky. It has a range of 175 kilometers at Mach 4, has a laser proximity fuse, and can engage targets at any speed, including stationary helicopters. The semi-active radar homing missile Sparrow was the main armament for Western air forces around the world for many years. First developed in 1947, there have been several models and variants. From the unguided 127mm Hvar aerial rocket, Douglas Aircraft Company was commissioned to develop a guidance system. The diameter proved too small for the electronics of the day and was increased to 203mm. The first successful intercept occurred in 1952. Dubbed AAMN-2 Sparrow, it entered service in 1956. It was restricted to visual range of attack and rode a guidance beam to the target which had to be optically aimed. Continual advances in rocket motor, guidance and warhead led to later models and variants, Sparrow 2 and Sparrow 2D. The Sparrow X was a nuclear-tipped variant that never saw service. The AAMN-6A was a liquid-fueled version. The AIM-7E saw extensive use in the Vietnam conflict. It had limitations but did account for 55 aircraft. In 1969, an improved E-2 version was introduced with head-on attack capability. The later version, the AIM-7F, had a dual rocket system to extend its flight and a larger warhead. Other countries have taken 7F and made their own advances, creating the Skyflash and Aspid models. There have also been the AIM-7P and 7M models, which have been phased out for the AIM-120 missile. The Phoenix long-range missile can only be carried aboard the F-14 Tomcat naval aircraft, now out of service with the US Navy. The aircraft was specifically designed as a long-range fleet defense system. The F-14 carried six Phoenix missiles, and with its advanced radar-tracking avionics could engage up to six targets at once. With a range of 184 kilometers at Mach 5, it had a ceiling of 30 kilometers and had active radar homing capability. To replace the Phoenix, the AIM-152 AAAM was in development when the Soviet Union fell. The project was abandoned, and the shorter range AIM-120 used to replace the Phoenix. The latest version, the AIM-120C7, has a range of 120 kilometers at Mach 4 and is now the standard radar-guided weapon on US fighter aircraft. Other countries have developed their own air-to-air -air missile capability, but generally follow a similar format for fighter aircraft. A mix of two types of air-to-air -air missile, a short-range infrared missile, and a medium-range inertial-guided active or semi-active radar homing missile.
The surface-based rocket launcher was developed parallel to the airborne variant. As with earlier times, the artillery made use of rocket launchers as an adjunct to their main armament. The Nebelwerfer was a towed rocket artillery launcher. 1.3 meters long and weighing 540 kilograms, they were six-barreled. With a caliber of 150 millimeters, their maximum range was 6.8 kilometers. The rocket was Wurfgranate 41, or Rocket Shell 41, and weighed 34 kilograms. A later model, the Nebelwerfer 42, had five barrels and a caliber of 210 millimeters. These rockets had a range of eight kilometers. The Soviets developed the Katyusha rocket system at the beginning of the Second World War. Utilized as rocket artillery, these unguided rockets were able to deliver a devastating amount of explosives to a small area. The rockets ran off rails mounted on various types of vehicles. There were the BM-13 launcher, the BM-8, and the heavy BM-31. The M-13 rocket consisted of 180 cm long by 12.2 cm diameter tubing with a nitrocellulose propellant charge with a single nozzle giving it the range of 5.4 kilometers. The warhead was either fragmentation, HE, or shaped charge. Terribly inaccurate, they were very effective with firing salvos of seven to 10 seconds, devastating an area. When large numbers of these launchers were employed together in batteries, the bombardment could saturate several hectares with high explosives. Later, the larger diameter rockets were employed, the 82mm M8 and the 310mm M31. The success of the Katyusha multiple rocket system has survived till today, with many variants in use in many countries. The BM-21 and larger BM-27 have advanced warheads, some multiple projectiles or bomblets or landmines, others capable of delivering chemical weapons. In 1943, a variant of the US M4 Sherman medium tank, the T-34 Calliope, was developed. It carried 60 rocket launch tubes, each 4.6 inch or 116.8 millimeter diameter. It saw service between 1944 and 45. Another variant, the Sherman Tulip, carried two 3 inch rocket tubes on its turret for RP-3 rockets. The modern artillery rocket launcher is the M270 MLRS, which saw service in the Gulf Wars. With a range of 42 kilometers, newer munitions are guided and or with submunition warheads. The grid square removal service is a nickname given to one such munition that can blanket an entire one kilometer square area with high explosives. The 1940s also saw the development of the larger version of these artillery rockets, a large ballistic missile. Although rocket-powered propulsion was being developed in several countries many years earlier by people like Robert H. Goddard of Massachusetts in the USA, his interest was purely scientific, although he did once approach the US Army with his invention, which they declined. He did develop a bazooka that was introduced in the Second World War. By the time he died in 1945, Goddard held 214 patents in rocketry. Early in World War II, the German army developed the Faustpatrone, a small, lightweight, one-man operated projectile launcher with an armor-piercing warhead. It was technically not a rocket, but was propelled by a charge of black powder, unguided and with a range of 30 meters. It led directly to the Panzer Faust, a larger and more effective version, and then the Panzer Schreck, which was a large 88 mm tube launcher with accompanying shield and targeting reticle. The rocket had a range of 150 meters and a shaped charge warhead of 3.3 kilograms. Its drawback was the amount of smoke generated that pinpointed the firer immediately. The British had developed the Piat anti-tank weapon based on the spigot mortar concept. The Piat utilized a powerful spring to discharge the projectile and trigger the propellant charge. Relatively quiet and smokeless, it could be used in enclosed spaces.
The American bazooka, like the Panzerfaust, utilized a tube launch system with an electrically fired rocket projectile, although the bazooka in its various forms was unreliable and prone to failure. The Soviets took the German design and developed the RPG-1 and RPG-2, and eventually the now common and plentiful RPG-7. With a 300-meter range, the projectile is launched from the tube, then ignites a solid propellant rocket motor, giving it a flat, quick trajectory towards its target. Like most other anti-armor weapons, the warhead is a shaped charge high explosive. RPG-18 is a single-shot fire-and-throw-away type weapon introduced during the Afghan conflict with the Soviet Union, probably fashioned after the American Laws rocket. As an example of the disposable society, the M-72 Laws rocket was a one-shot, discardable rocket launcher. Compact and issued in large numbers, the launch tube was two-piece and extended to arm the device. It fired an unguided, shaped charge warhead with flip-out fins. The first generation of guided anti-tank rockets were fly-by-wire, requiring the user to adjust its trajectory during the flight, making the firer vulnerable to counter-attack as he visually tracks the weapon to the target. Second generation weapons required the operator to just maintain his aim on the target. The missile would self-correct to reach the aimed point. Third generation are fire and forget. Once the target is acquired and the weapon fired, the projectile will self-adjust until hitting the designated target point, allowing the operator to move immediately after firing his weapon. The first generation of Soviet guided anti-tank weapons was the AT-1 Snapper and the AT-2 Swatter missile. Both were rail-launched from a vehicle. The later version, AT-3, was wire-guided by optical sight. Codenamed Saga, this standalone missile with no launch tube or rail did considerable damage to Israeli tanks in the Middle East War of October 1973. The AT-4 Spigot rocket had increased range up to 2,000 meters and was tube-fired with wire guidance. The latest Russian portable system is the AT-7 Saxhorn, an advanced wire-guided system. The U.S. currently deployed the small or shoulder-mounted multi-purpose assault weapon. It has an effective range of 500 meters for a tank, but can be used for bunker busting or knocking down a building with an enhanced explosive warhead. The USS Boston, America's first guided missile cruiser in action off Cuba. From below deck magazines, its potent Terrier missiles are automatically positioned on launching racks. Ship and missile were designed for each other in what engineers call an integrated weapon system, lethally efficient. This cruiser mounts no big guns. One of its missiles can sink any enemy ship or with an atom warhead smash an enemy base. A full salvo can be aimed and fired in seconds, guided to target while in flight. With the advent of the USS Boston class, the guided missile comes into its own at sea. The new combat punch of the surface Navy. Missiles to attack ships can be launched from land, sea, submarine or air, and are generally a sea-skimming, radar-homing variant. The first guided anti-ship weapon was the Fritz X, a German guided bomb that was radio controlled from the deploying aircraft and was not a missile. The first guided missile was the Soviet SSN-1 Scrubber, which also had an air-launched variant. These were quickly superseded. The SSN Styx missile, or P-15 designate, was a liquid fuel rocket with a solid rocket booster. Capable of high subsonic speed and a range of 40 kilometers, it was radar homing, but large and easily intercepted. The Chinese developed the Silkworm based on this design. The French developed the MM-38 missile, more commonly known as the Exocet. 4.7 meters long with a solid fuel motor, it has a range of up to 180 kilometers. Launched from any type of platform, several hundred of these missiles were fired in anger during the 1980s, including the Falklands War, where they did considerable damage to the British Navy. Other missile systems of note are the Harpoon, Sea Skewer and SS-9 Siren, all of which have been fired in combat. 
The harpoon is a standard weapon with many navies around the world. It is a small but highly effective missile. Introduced in 1977, it has a turbojet engine and a range of 280 kilometers and has active radar homing. It can be launched from any type of platform, including a submarine torpedo tube. The SS-9 Siren had a range of 110 kilometers. With a turbojet engine and solid rocket booster, it recently saw action in the Black Sea against Georgian surface combatants. The first true long-range ballistic missile was the Nazi A-4 or V-2 rocket. This rocket can lay claim to being the progenitor of all modern rockets and space launch vehicles. There were several great minds that contributed to the development of this rocket, names like Hermann Obert, Max Vallier, Willi Lai, and Werner von Braun. The Verein für Raumschifffahrt, VFR, was formed in Berlin by a group of these scientists and authors. Their aim was the more noble path for rocketry, that of manned space travel. However, the rise of the German Nazi party and the commencement of hostilities quashed their intent and turned these engineers towards the more infamous weapons production. By December 1934, von Braun scored his first successes with an A2 rocket powered by ethanol and liquid oxygen. Two years later, as plans for the follow-on A3 rocket were being finalized, initial planning began for the A4 rocket a rocket that was to be, in the words of research head Walter Dornberger, a practical weapon, not a research tool. The rocket researchers quickly outgrew their facilities at Kummersdorf on the outskirts of Berlin, and in 1936, operations were transferred to a remote island on Germany's Baltic coast, Peenemünde. There were many failures before a success. But eventually in March 1942, the first A-4 test rocket flew successfully. Later that year, on October 3rd, another A-4 roared aloft carrying a warhead of high explosives. The A-4 liquid propellant missile, extending some 46 feet in length, and weighing 27,000 pounds, flew at speeds in excess of 3,500 miles per hour. Topped with a 2,200 pound warhead, it could hit a target 500 miles away. The A-4 was renamed the Vengeance Weapon 2, or V-2, and like its pulse jet powered relative, the V-1, began to fall on targets in Europe and in September 1944 against London. A total of 6,048 rockets were built, 53 launches failed. In all, over 3,172 V-2s were successfully launched and hit their intended targets. Over 1,600 struck Belgium and 1,400 hit London, killing a total of 2,754 civilians. The V-2 reached speeds in excess of Mach 4 and descended from over 100 kilometers altitude. It was almost impossible to intercept these weapons that struck without any prior noise or warning. After the war, the scientists and engineers were rounded up by both sides. The US exporting several hundred freight cars full of rocket components and several hundred scientists and their families, whom they settled into the US and put to work on their rocket technology. The Soviets managed to secure some scientists and blueprints as well, 
the missile race was on in earnest. Both the East and the West wanted to combine their newest atomic weaponry with long-range rockets. In the Soviet Union, the ballistic missile project was put under the control of Dmitry Ustinov, and Sergei Korolyov was appointed the chief designer of long-range missiles. It was here that Korolyov turned his talent towards spaceflight and launching satellites. But the true function of the rockets under development was delivering nuclear payloads halfway across the globe. Ballistic missiles were categorized by their range, with the exception of sea-launched missiles from submarines or SLBMs. That is the tactical or battlefield range missile of 150 to 300 kilometers, theater or medium range missiles of 300 to 3,500, intermediate range IRBM and long range LRBM 2,500 to 5,500 kilometers, and the granddaddy of them all, the intercontinental or ICBM with 5,500 plus kilometers range. Most types of missile class were developed concurrently and within differing branches of the military. The Soviets seemed to move ahead of the West in the early years of development. The NATO designation was free rocket over ground for this unguided artillery rocket family. Mounted on army trucks of various types, the Frog was a short range, spin stabilized artillery rocket and had a range of 40 kilometers. The Frog 7 was capable of delivering a nuclear or chemical warhead up to a range of 70 kilometers. A modified Frog 7 used during the Iran-Iraq conflict increased its range to 90 kilometers. The R-11, later referred to by the West as the Scud missile, was developed in 1951 as a short-range nuclear weapon capable of hitting targets in Europe from forward mobile positions. The successor was the R-17 or SS-1C Scud B, also mobile and able to launch a variety of warheads twice the distance of its predecessor. The final variant, the Scud D, had a range of 700 kilometers and improved accuracy down to 50 meters. Many Scuds were sold around the world. The US equivalent was the MGM-18 La Crosse. Introduced in 1959, it was soon made redundant as the advances in technology raced ahead. You know, have been alert against the military threat of the communist bloc. Now, Honest John missiles add to NATO's striking power. With propulsion, guidance, and war. The MGM 5 Corporal was a direct result of studying the V 2 rockets and the first U.S. missile fitted with a nuclear warhead. The initial portion of its trajectory. After the fuel has been shut off at a position and velocity required to hit a particular target, the Corporal follows a ballistic trajectory. Its range was just 139 kilometers, and it entered service with the British in 1959. Inaccurate and unreliable, it was quickly replaced by the Sergeant rocket. With an improved solid fuel motor, the Sergeant was also fitted with a nuclear warhead for the European theater. Its range was between 25 and 84 miles, depending on payload and targeting. It was replaced by 1977. Deployed first in 1972 to replace the Sergeant, the Lance was also nuclear capable. During flight, the guidance system corrects for variations in air density and winds and keeps the missile on course to the target. This might be a large troop concentration, an airfield, a communications complex, an enemy missile site, or some other critical military installation. The non-nuclear warhead carries a cargo of 836 bombets, which are released above the ground and explode on impact. A liquid-fueled rocket with a range of 120 kilometers at Mach 3, it was withdrawn from service by the SALT Treaty. The warheads have been stockpiled and await destruction. At Redstone Arsenal in Alabama, Von Braun developed a Redstone rocket directly from the V-2. 
intended as a medium-range ballistic missile for the army, with a range between 1 and 3,000 kilometers, it was used to test nuclear weapons in the Pacific. Eight missiles were deployed in Germany between 1958 and 1964. It also served to launch astronauts into suborbital space. When the Soviet Union demonstrated their missile capability with the launch of Sputnik, the US rapidly deployed the only operational missile in their arsenal that could deter the Soviet Union. At 20 meters long and 2.4 meters in diameter, the Thor was an intermediate range missile capable of lobbing a nuclear warhead 2,400 kilometers and was the United States' first operational nuclear strike missile. Due to its range, it was stationed in the UK between 1959 and 1963. As a logical extension of Redstone, the Jupiter missile was fielded to support the Thor missiles. 30 missiles were deployed to Italy at 10 sites, and later a further 15 missiles sighted in Turkey. With a range of 2,410 kilometers, these posed a direct threat to Moscow. Deployed between 1959 and 1963, they were operationally obsolete very quickly and were withdrawn from service as part of the negotiations with the Soviet Union over the Cuban Missile Crisis. The missiles stationed in Italy suffered four lightning strikes whilst armed with megaton range warheads. In each case, arming batteries were activated and in two cases, tritium deuterium boost gas was injected into the warheads partially arming the devices. Lightning protection equipment was quickly installed at all sites. Effort to expand wherever it can, to grow bigger, to take over, to supply. The R-5 Pobeda was better known in the West as the SS-3 Shyster, a single-stage theater missile with a detachable nuclear warhead. It entered service in 1956. R-12 Dvina was another theater-range megaton-tipped missile and the predominant European threat during the Cold War, and indeed the missile sent to Cuba that caused the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. With a range of 2,000 kilometers, it was a three-stage liquid-fueled rocket. All ships of any kind bound to Cuba, from whatever nation or port, will be found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons be turned back. In the face of U.S. determination, the Soviets dismantled their missiles and bombers and shipped them home. It was the retreat to Moscow. The democracies had served notice on the Russians that any aggressive threat in the Western Hemisphere would not be tolerated. Two Terrier surface-to-air missiles are fired at a drone. To counter the ballistic missile threat, ABM, or anti-ballistic missile system, was developed during the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States to guard against a preemptive nuclear strike. The system comprised early detection satellites and radar tracking, then launching a high-speed missile for interception either in the booster phase of the enemy's rocket, i.e. in the atmosphere, or later in space when the warhead detaches from the booster. The first successful interception of a ballistic missile with another was performed in 1961 by the Soviets at their Sarishagan test range. The Soviets then installed a ring of these A-35 ABM missiles around Moscow in 1966. These batteries also protected two Soviet ICBM complexes near to Moscow. These missiles have been constantly upgraded and are still in use today. ABM-1B was an advance on the A-35 missile and went operational in 1978. Gazelle and Gorgon are the later enhancements to this system. Project Nike was a US Army project for a line-of-sight anti-aircraft missile and research was begun after World War II. The solid rocket booster developed would go on to become a staple rocket motor for numerous non-military applications. Project Nike Ajax was the US's attempt at an anti-ballistic missile system in the late 1950s and 60s. 
utilizing the Nike Hercules missile system, which was a two-stage rocket. The Nike Zeus was an improvement in booster capability, with a third stage added, and armed solely with a five kiloton thermonuclear device. There was an A and a B variant, and it was able to reach speeds of 12,800 kilometers per hour, and was renamed Spartan in 1967 as part of the US Sentinel ABM program. Spartan was used in conjunction with Sprint, a shorter range but much faster missile, and designed as a last ditch effort to intercept an incoming nuclear tipped missile. The Sprint, or LIM 49A, could reach speeds of Mach 10 in five seconds after launch. With a range of 40 kilometers, it was armed with a W66 enhanced radiation thermonuclear weapon, which in theory could destroy an incoming nuclear warhead with neutron flux. The Sentinel program was short-lived and scaled back to the Safeguard program, which only ran from mid-1975 to early 1976. The 1972 anti-ballistic missile treaty between the two superpowers effectively terminated this strategic weapon development. However, tactical systems were still allowable. The MIM-104 Patriot is an anti-aircraft weapon which was deployed as a tactical anti-missile system during the first Gulf War to counter Scud ballistic missile launches in the Middle East. Patriot stands for Phased Array Tracking Radar Intercept on Target. The first field-deployed missile of this type was the standard missile MIM-104A, an anti-aircraft missile capable of 70 kilometers range at Mach 3. It was deployed worldwide in several armed forces and navies. A later version was equipped to detect and destroy ECM-emitting aircraft. GEM, or guidance-enhanced missiles, increased their capability and effectiveness to include targets such as small cross-section radar signatures and stealth technology. A further development of the Patriot was the Pac-2. In the 1980s, an upgraded warhead and detonation system was employed to guarantee a kill. Further developments included the Pac-3, improved radar and tracking. Greater maneuverability was provided by small rocket motors placed in the upper portion of the missile. Meads is being developed to replace the aging Patriot system and will include refined target tracking radar sensitive enough to allow the warhead to discriminate between missiles, helicopters, UAVs and cruise missiles. As part of the military surveillance program, satellites are deemed a legitimate target in wartime and the ability to disable or destroy these satellites has long been a military dilemma. Some references to ASAT capability in the Soviet Union go back to the times of their earliest ICBM development. The UR-200 was to be a general-purpose, two-stage, liquid-fueled rocket capable of delivering a nuclear warhead into orbit. From there, it could be used conventionally to attack a surface target or detonate in orbit close to an enemy satellite. The system was never put into service and was abandoned when Khrushchev was ousted from power. Work began as early as 1959 in the United States. Utilizing rocket systems from other projects, they attempted to intercept the satellite Explorer 6 at 25.1 kilometers altitude with a high Virgo missile. It passed within four kilometers of the target, which would have been sufficient for a nuclear-tipped weapon. Other tests were made with the Nike Zeus nuclear-tipped missile. This was dropped for the Thor missile system. The US gave the system little priority until 1982, when they mounted an Altair upper stage onto an AGM-69 SRAM and called it the Vogt ASAT. Carried under the belly of an F-15 fighter, the aircraft would climb to 24,000 meters and vertically launch the rocket. The first and only successful interception took place September 1985. The program was canceled soon after. In January 2007, the Chinese demonstrated their ASAT capability by shooting down an old Chinese weather satellite. They did it with a mobile-launched SC-19 missile. The remarkable achievement was made more impressive by the fact it was a so-called kinetic kill warhead. This, in layman's terms, was a dead hit. No explosive was used in the warhead. It just smashed into the satellite at a high relative velocity and destroyed it. Very accurate indeed. The following year and, quote, 
officially by no means a testosterone-fueled reaction to the Chinese, unquote, the U.S. conducted a similar test under the guise of a health and safety exercise. A rogue U.S. spy satellite, the USA-193, was dropping from orbit. Officials were worried the hydrazine fuel on board would cause injury or death to people on the ground if they were exposed to the satellite debris. The U.S. Navy were ordered to shoot it down using an SM-3 ABM. The warhead hit its target and a kill was recorded. The U.S. Navy grunted and turned to other important matters. It would seem that missile technology is the future of the machines of war. Why?